Hi, I'm Brian, a Road Code Kid, and this video shows how easy it is to find syntax errors in JavaScript and CoffeeScript files using the app. I've already gone ahead and added a project to CodeKit, Buggy JavaScript. It has two files, main.javascript and the latest version of jQuery. I'll go ahead and click on main.javascript to bring in the options for that file. And what I'm saying here is whenever I save, I want CodeKit to check this file syntax with JS hint. I can also choose JS lint, which is a little more strict, or nothing. Don't worry about syntax errors in this file. If I want to manually check the file at any point, I can come down here and click the check syntax button. But CodeKit will also do it whenever I save. So down here in Sublime, I have the main.javascript file open, and it looks pretty good, no obvious errors, so we'll go ahead and hit Command S to save the file. CodeKit comes back and says, hey, there's five issues. Well, over here are the line numbers, and at the end of the text is the column number of wherever the issue is. The gold line up here shows the faulty line of code, and this is the warning that JS hint spits out. So it's telling me on line five, which is this right here, it expected three equal signs and saw two instead. Well, the three equal signs make sure the types match in JavaScript, so we'll go ahead and correct that. And then, you know, are there any other easy ones? Missing semicolon down here on line 12, column 41, right there. So we'll add that semicolon, and now we'll resave the file. And we're down to these three errors. Well, these ones we're going to need to change some options on JS hint to get rid of. What we're saying here is my global var on line 7 is not defined. Well, my global var is a variable that I'm defining in another script on my page, right? Here I'm just setting it, but it's already been defined as a global variable. The problem is JS hint doesn't know about it because it's not defined in this file. Same thing with console, right? Console is a thing we use for debugging, but it's not defined anywhere, so JS hint is saying, hey, this is a problem. Well, to fix this, all we need to do is tweak the settings a little bit. So we'll come back to our project settings area and come in here to the syntax checkers category, and right here is a globals text field, and this lets us specify custom globals that JS hint should be aware of in our file. So all I need to do is add my global var right there, and if I had more, it would just be a comma separated list. So my global var, I'll go ahead and get out of that and come back to my file and save, and now the error is a little different. It's telling me, hey, my global var is read only. Globals are read only by default, and I'm setting a value. Right, so how do I get rid of that? Hmm. Well, I just come back to my project settings area and add colon right like that. And then again, I would just comma separate the next thing over and click there and come back here and save the file. All right, we got rid of that one. We're down to just console is not defined. Well, I could come back here and add colon console and, you know, keep going and defining globals. But JS hint has some options for really frequently defined globals. So I'll just come in here and click JS hint. And this is a long list of options that I can go through to customize exactly what JS hint considers an error. The one we're looking for today is all the way down at the bottom, environments, and we want to turn on devel, which is short for development. And by doing this, we're telling JS hint, hey, don't worry about stuff like console, alert, all the stuff we use frequently during development. So I'll go ahead and close out of there, come back to my file and save. And this time there are no errors. If we switch to the log, we can see this file passed JS hint, we're perfect. CodeKit also gives us the ability to combine multiple JavaScript or CoffeeScript files together so that we can reduce HTTP requests on our page. I'm going to do that right here. I'm going to bring in jQuery. I comment it out, but I add at CodeKit prepend, just like this, and jQuery.javascript. I'm going to save my file, and now I'm going to see a lot more syntax errors because CodeKit's finding some issues in jQuery.javascript. Well, there's 125 issues total, and I don't really care about them. It's not my code. I know jQuery's solid, so how do I fix this? Well, I can collapse this file's issues just by clicking this bar, and you can see my file was fine, no issues. But if I don't want to see these all the time, what I need to do is come into the Files pane, choose main.javascript, and then take a look at the Imported Files tab. Here, it's showing me that this file prepends jQuery.javascript, and it does so with an in-file statement. And because I don't want to see those 125 syntax errors when I save, I'll just uncheck this shield right here. Now, when I come back to my file and save, CodeKit's going to check the syntax. Those same errors still exist, but it didn't bother me about them. And if I really want to see them, I can just expand this row, and here they are. This is a great way to work with libraries that you don't control and still find syntax errors in your own files. Now, if you're writing CoffeeScript, the workflow is almost identical. I have script.coffee selected in CodeKit here. It has some issues, so I'll click Check Syntax. 
I see the five errors right here, and again on the left are the line numbers where those errors appear in the file. But instead of seeing the line of code that contains the error, CoffeeLint shows me the name of the error that I have violated and why I have violated it right below. Now again, if I want to configure what is and is not an error, I just open Project Settings, choose CoffeeLint, and check things as appropriate. There's one other thing to be aware of. New in CodeKit 2.0, you can actually prepend and append JavaScript files directly to CoffeeScript files. So I can come in here and write CodeKit prepend jQuery.javascript. And if I save my file, CodeKit will add jQuery before the compiled JavaScript output of this CoffeeScript file. The only issue is that doing this will sometimes cause CoffeeLint to fail with a fatal error. So keep that in mind. Otherwise, it's super easy to syntax check CoffeeScript and JavaScript with CodeKit too. Thanks for using the app. Take care.